Hello everyone and happy summer. Welcome to a brand new summer sewing tutorial. This one, this project is going to be so much fun and I can't wait to share with y'all. Um, before I do so, I thought I would show y'all this super fun animated intro that one of our animation students at my school um, made for me as one of their projects. So how cool is this? So it has been a hot minute since I created a sewing tutorial here on YouTube and it is now summertime. I'm on summer break and I'm doing all things sewing. I have such a long list and such a huge pile of fabric for projects that I have ideas for and that I need to make. Um, it's just about time and summer is the time. However, this video is inspired by a very spontaneous project that I was not planning on making or doing. Um, but it's just too cool to pass up and I thought it would be super fun to share with y'all especially since this project and this dress and this design is something that I saw on Instagram. It isn't a super popular brand and design in the US. Um, I've seen a couple people in New York wear but predominantly most people in UK are wearing because it's a very UK influenced style um, which I personally love. I love UK fashion because it's way cooler than American fashion. Anyways, um, this dress is perfect for summer. It's from the slow fashion brand Mobby the Label. Um, it's a UK based brand. She basically creates all of these dresses in slow batch, slow and small batches. Um, she has a lot of custom work and they're just like so fun, so cool, so colorful and very unique. So this whole brand is centered around different colors of gingham plaid fabric and that's what I love about them. Um, so specifically this dress right here, I love the fact that it is two different colors of gingham but it's also pattern and color blocked. So half of the dress is one color of gingham, the other half of the dress is another color and then it alternates and I think it's just so fun. So that's the dress that I personally really really love but then there are a couple of other styles like this one where they integrate a third color um, around the waist and then there is also this design where they integrate four colors. So I bought three different colors, lavender, pink, and green gingham again very spontaneously and I couldn't decide what style I wanted to make so I pulled my followers on Instagram to see which one they wanted. These are the poll results so most of them said that they liked option one which is the dress that doesn't actually have half and half colors it's just four different colors of gingham and I really that's don't really like it anymore. I don't like that one anymore. I really want to do like the half and half. So anyways, we're going to see through the course of this video which design I end up going with. I'll walk you through different options and how I end up deciding if I'm just going to go with two colors or three. Um, also for this project, I am not pattern making. My pattern, we are going to hack a pattern that I already have. So I'm going to walk you through that process in this video and show you how I take patterns that I already have and kind of tweak them and adapt them to fit the style of the dress that we're wanting to make one of these two so without further ado let's get designing all right so these are the colors of gingham that i ended up going with i just picked these up at hobby lobby they weren't on sale but if you check hobby lobby or joanne fabric sales chances are these prints would be on sale at some point this summer so originally i just decided to do the lavender in this hot pink color and i was going to use that for the half and half dress because i really like the half and half look but i kind of wanted to go with more of a purple and a pink color which is probably my top design option however i threw on this lime green and i thought that looked really fun integrating a bright color with these two so if i don't just do the half and half with purple and pink i'm going to add in a lime green gingham waistband um and do half and half for the dress and the waistband will be the green so we're still working through that and like I said, I'm going to hack a pattern. So this is a new Simplicity pattern that came out for this spring. It's a really gorgeous style and what made me realize that I would be able to use this as a pattern hack for this project is this yellow dress. So the top has the bodice split into two pieces that go down and then the waist kind of part or the empire waist um, goes up into a triangle which is what the original dress has so we're just going to chop off the bottom of this dress and use the top of this for the bodice and the sleeves so essentially what we're going to be using is this piece which is for this dress but we're just going to be using the top part this is the bodice front the bodice back and then the sleeve that we're going to use so we're going to adjust length and hack this to fit the style that we want it to be Alright, so these are the three pattern pieces that I am using to hack. 
So this is the back bodice, which we are going to keep as is. The main thing we're going to do is that when we adapt this front bodice and create the waistband, we have to make sure that the side seam equals this side seam. So this is what the original bodice is. It's created to match up on the side, but we want to shorten this so that we can create that waistband at the bottom. So I have drawn in some curves here that we're going to try to use um, whenever we add the front kind of waist bit. And then we're gonna take this measurement and that is what we are going to use to draw a line over here on the side um, so that this will get attached and sewn on to this. Um, we don't need the rest of the skirt because we're going to make our own skirt. And this is the sleeve from the pattern, so we are going to be able to just use the already short sleeve that they have. But I want to add more gathering to the top, so I'm going to expand this when I create it um, and probably fold it in half, cut it on a fold, and add about three inches so that I can have more gathers. My first step is to cut out all of my pattern pieces. So since this dress is going to be color blocked, which means there are going to be multiple different colors of fabric as the bodice, I'm taking that into account as I'm cutting out my pieces. So I also want this bodice to be lined. So for each piece that I'm cutting out, I'm going to cut two of that piece for each color of fabric. So essentially I'm going to cut two pieces for the bodice front purple, two pieces for the bodice left pink, etc. And as you can see, I've also made some adaptions to the original pattern so that it fits more in line with the style of the dress I'm going with. So as I'm cutting that out, I'm making sure to take into account those adaptions, such as raising the curve of the under bust for the front of the bodice. And then once my pieces are cut out of my fabric, I'm just going to use those fabric pieces as my pattern is going forward so that everything is cohesive across the board for all of my different colors. So now that purple is cut out, we are then going to cut out those exact same pieces, two of which from the pink. Now that all of the bodice pieces are cut out, we are going to work on the waistband. And since I'm hacking a simplicity pattern for this dress, all I'm going to do is use the top section of the original skirt pattern to create my waistband. One, because I know it will fit to the bodice pieces I have already cut since they're from the same pattern, and it has the shape that I'm going for. And since I'm playing around with multiple different designs for the waistband, I'm going to cut out many versions of this. So I'm gonna cut out pieces that are from pink, pieces that are from purple, so that they can be sewn together to create a split design. And I'm also going to cut one out of the lime green, but that one's going to be on a fold. After I cut them out, I just played around with some different ideas for how I wanted the waistband to look like later on down the road. And then here's me cutting out the green. For the sleeves of this dress, I decided to use the sleeve pattern that was already in the original simplicity pattern that I was hacking, and I just decided to use the shortened sleeve line that was printed on the original pattern. And since I also wanted to add a lot of width to my sleeve so that I could add more gathers, I decided to move it about three, three and a half inches away from the fold so that when I cut it, I would add width to add gathers and fullness later on. And because I am playing with the idea of color blocking with this dress, I cut one sleeve out of pink and one out of purple. For the skirt, like usual, I opted not to use a pattern and to simply use the already width of the fabric as I bought it, which is about 45 inches. The length of my skirt was around 37 inches, so you can adapt that to whatever works for you. And since I'm working with color blocking, I cut one out of purple and one out of pink. And because these are cut on a fold, I am going to actually cut the fold on both of these pieces to create two pieces of purple, two pieces of pink, and I will choose one of each to sew together to create the color blocking effect for the front and back of the skirts. And what is a homemade dress without pockets, am I right? So like usual, I try to add in pockets to all of my dresses, and this dress was no different. So this is what my pockets look like. You always have to have four pieces, two for the front, two for the back, and you'll see how I add them later on. Now that all of our pieces are cut out and ready to be sewn, I am first going to start by sewing my waistband, which is essentially just attaching a purple piece to a pink piece two times um, because my waistband is going to be lined, and I again, I'm playing with this color block effect, so it's going to be half and half color wise. Press your seams as you sew them because it always helps your garment come out way better in the end. Next up, I'm mapping out my color blocking effect since each side has to be a different color and then each 
front bodice piece has to be attached to a different color for the back of the bodice. So once all that is mapped out, we are going to start by sewing our shoulder seams, attaching a front bodice piece to a back bodice piece, and we're going to do that four times since we have lining pieces. So I always like to line all of my bodices, and for this dress, because it's multi-different colors, um, to create my lining, I obviously always cut double, um, but since half of the front is going to be purple and the back is going to be pink, to create the lining for this piece, I had to sew on or sew the two pieces together at the shoulder opposite of the other side or mirrored. That way when I open this up and we have the seam like that, and then I open this, if we place them on top of each other, right sides together, the seams will be matching for the lining. And then all I have to do is sew the necklines and flip it in so that the seams are hidden on the inside and then attach the bodice together. So same thing for creating the opposite side. We are going to sew the front piece to the back piece at the shoulder and to create the lining, we are going to do the exact same thing except it's going to be mirrored. So they're actually going to be facing the opposite direction. I hope you caught all that about the lining because I honestly reconfused myself again. But at the end of the day, it's not as confusing as it seems. Basically, just sew the shoulder seams, press all of your seams, and then you are going to place your fabric print to print, right sides together, seam to seam, matching up the color so that you can sew the neckline and snip it and turn it out. As a reminder, since this dress is playing with color blocking, you will notice that my colors are different on every single side. So we have a purple that's paired up with a pink, and then in the back, it is the same thing, a purple paired up with a pink, but it's opposite, so diagonally to the front, if that makes sense, so keep that in mind. So we are pairing these up right sides together so that we can sew a 1 4 inch seam along the neckline so that we can then flip it in and have this really nice finished edge along the neck, and that also kind of creates the lining. So now that our bodice pieces have been flipped right side out, you can see that the seam is hidden on the inside and we have this nice crisp edge along the neckline of our bodice. So this is kind of how we did the lining for this bodice. And now we're going to just use these pieces as actual full pieces for the rest of this project and pretend that they're one instead of two things. The original dress has a variation of pleats for the under bust curve of the bodice rather than gather so I decided to add that into mine. I simply just folded my fabric over around half an inch, laid it to the side, pinned it into place and I'm going to add a basting stitch later on. So my whole idea with this was to make sure that after I added my pleats that curve would be the same length as the curve on my waistband so that once it's sewn everything will look equal. I also ended up curving off the sides of these bodice pieces a little bit. I kind of wish that I hadn't but in the end it all worked out. And since I worked out the pleat spacing on my purple piece, I then had to transfer those markings and pleats to my pink side. Now we add a basting stitch so our pleats don't shift. So now that the top part of this bodice is constructed, I started playing around with the waistband I wanted to go with if I wanted to use the split color waistband or the lime green because this really is going to determine the whole style of the dress that I end up deciding on. And as I started playing with the waistband, I realized that I was going to have to change some things and finesse it a bit so that it would actually connect well to the top part of the bodice and lay how I wanted it to on my body. So. Here is the split waistband. The split waistband was a little bit easier to fit more accurately to the bodice because it had a seam that I was able to kind of sew to be more contoured to the body. I ended up recutting the lime green waistband more to diagonal on the curve so that it actually kind of blended in with the curves um, of my body or at least on this dress form a little bit. And after playing around with this, I decided to go with the lime green waistband because I just like the crazy pop of color, which meant that I ended up cutting lime green sleeves to tie in the sleeve color to the waistband, which you'll see later on. Okay, 
All right, so it is day two working on this dress, and I think I've decided that I'm gonna go with the lime green waistband color, and then I'm going to do lime green sleeves to tie it in rather than rather than doing like split color sleeves and a split color waistband even though that's super fun i just really like the idea of three colors so i think that's what we're going to go with and also because of how this dress is construction with everything being halved like color and print wise i am sewing it with the different like with different steps so like my typical steps where i will construct my entire bodice then attach the skirt i'm not really going to do that method so i'll try and walk y'all through um how i am constructing this stepwise a little bit differently just so it's easier um with all of the different colors and kinds of fabric and if you're new around here and you're wondering what in the world is behind me this is a kayak that hangs on the wall because my studio is in our garage so fun fact this is our modern artwork um in the studio so let's dive into more designing okay so my next step is going to be to attach the lime green waistband to the two bust pieces after that is attached then we are going to sew on our sleeves because the easiest method for sewing on sleeves is to sew them just along the arm opening before you sew the side seam that way you don't have to actually insert your sleeve into a hole so much easier so we're sewing this attaching sleeves then we are going to attach the two front pieces of the skirt to the front piece the two back pieces of the skirt to the bodice back pieces then we're going to sew down the sides um which is a little bit different step wise but it's going to make this so much easier just like the bodice pieces my waistband is going to have two layers so i decided to base it across the top before i attach it to the bodice now that my waistband is done, we are going to start pinning the bodice pieces to the waistband and I started by pinning it from the side inward because there actually is going to be a little tiny bit of a gap at the very tip top of that like mountain peak for the waistband and this is all how it's supposed to be because this is how you actually end up with the very like pointy peak um, for the upwards part of the green waistband. So I sewed this on 5 8 inches right along where I pinned it and then after I sewed it I also went and finished off my seams with my serger. And as always, we want to give our seams a nice good press, so I pressed all of these seams downward so that they would lay down facing when worn. Next up are the sleeves. So first we are going to do a tiny little rolled hem on the bottom of the sleeves, then we are going to attach elastic using a tension method, and then we are going to put our basting stitches along the top to gather it. So in order to do the rolled hem at the bottom of my sleeves, I use a rolled hem foot. This is a foot you can attach to your machine and it creates this nice tiny little hem that is barely not noticeable and takes up way less fabric. After the hem, I put in my basting stitch along the top part of the sleeve so that I could gather it later on. A basting stitch is your widest stitch width without back stitching. Now to attach the elastic to the bottom part of the sleeve to create the ruffle and have it fit to my arm, I'm using a method where you take a piece of elastic that basically is the circumference of your arm. So in order to attach it to the bottom of your sleeve, you actually have to stretch it all the way across. And as you stretch it, you are going to sew it into place. So when you let go, it actually cinches together and creates this nice ruffle. So I position my elastic about an inch and a fourth up from the hem. And then as you are sewing it, you are going to stretch your elastic all the way from side to side or end to end. Um, you're going to just put a regular stitch. And then when you're done, it ends up being all gathered together. Since our basting stitch is at the top part of our sleeve, we are now ready to start gathering the top of our sleeve so that we can pin it into place along the curve of the sleeve opening. So you always wanna make sure that you identify the top middle part of your sleeve. You attach that to your shoulder seam and then gather it right in the top middle of your sleeve while pinning it around the curve so that it all fits into place and lies really equally along the shoulder with the gathers exactly where you want them. So tie off your gathers at the end, pin it into place, and then we're going to sew it down. Okay. 
All of my main seams, I usually sew on a 5 8 seam allowance, so that's what I'm doing for this sleeve. Sewing all of my gathers down, and then after my sleeve is attached to that sleeve opening, we're going to just finish off all of the edges with my serger. Now it's time to start on the skirt, and if you remember my skirt pieces, I cut in half so that I could have two pieces of purple and two pieces of pink. The reason for this is that our skirts are split color or color blocking, so we are going to take a purple piece, we're going to sew it to a pink, and then we're going to do that to the other piece as well. And then one of those combinations is going to become the front of my skirt, and then the other is going to become the back of my skirt. So right now we're just attaching our two colors together to create this split effect. After that, we're gonna finish our seams and then add our gathers to the top of our skirt pieces. And before we start gathering the top of our skirt and attaching it to the bodice, we are going to put our pockets on. So I usually position my pockets about three inches down from the main part of the waistband. You sew one pocket onto each side, and then as you are sewing your side seams, you just sew around your pocket, and that creates this fun little magical pocket opening. We are now ready to attach our skirt to our bodice. Before I did that, I made sure to double check my side seams and I realized that the green part of my waistband was a little bit long, so I just trimmed off about like half an inch so that my side seams would be even. This really didn't throw off that much with my dress or my waistband and it actually looked better being a little smaller. So now that all of my side seams are equal, I'm going to start gathering my front section of my skirt and making sure that half of the pink is only gathered to half of the green waistband. So as you can see, I put a a little mark to make sure I could focus on my middle section. After my gathers were equally gathered to be half and half split, I just pinned it into place and we're going to do the exact same thing to the back of our skirt. So our skirt right now is essentially two separate pieces because we are going to do our side seams as our very last step for this dress. And now it's time to attach the back of my skirt. So remember that the pink skirt has to be attached to the purple back and vice versa. And you'll also notice that the top section of my back skirt is open, as is my back bodice, and that's because we are going to be inserting a zipper. So we need all of that to be open for the zipper to be installed after our side seams are made. Now that our skirt pieces have been gathered and attached to the bottom of our bodice, we are just going to sew and secure all of those into place using a regular stitch with 5 8 seam allowance. Now that our skirt is attached, it's time to sew up our side seam. So I do this by matching up all of my seams for my waistband, under my arm, pinning it into place, and then just stitching all the way down on 5 8 seam allowance. Since I have pockets, remember that you want to sew around your pockets to create that magic pocket opening once you turn your dress right side out. So we're just going to sew down our right side and our left side. And then the skirt, or the entire dress actually, is basically done all except for a hem and adding the zipper. So for my hem, I'm going to do a rolled hem foot, and if you are not familiar with a rolled hem foot, it uses a special foot on your sewing machine that looks like this. It essentially rolls the edge of your fabric while sewing it at the same time, so it's a barely noticeable hem. It doesn't take up a lot of fabric, and it is super quick because all you do is put your fabric through the foot on your sewing machine. So that's what I'm going to do as my hem so that I can keep my dress long. So this is actually what the rolled hem looks like because I did it on the edge of my sleeves. So it's this tiny little hem done with the foot of your sewing machine. 
So that's what we're going to do on the bottom of my dress. I love using a rolled hem foot because it saves a lot of time, but I will say it takes a little bit of practice figuring out how to actually use this with your fabric. But once you figure it out, it is going to be a game changer, trust me. Now it's time to install the zipper and how I usually install my zippers is that I will sew up the back of my dress using a basting stitch and I usually sew this to the fit that I need my zipper to be at tightness or looseness wise and then after my basting stitch is put into my garment I will press those seams open and then my zipper will be pinned right in the middle of where those seams are so that I can sew it into place and then because I basted my seams I just rip that open and then the zipper will be good to go and usable. Okay, so I just did a try on after I put the zipper in and there's a few tweaks I have to make to the zipper and I realized that the bodice is not quite fitting exactly how I want it so I'm actually gonna have to go in and like rip out parts of the bodice to adjust it so I'll show you kind of what that's looking like on the mannequin. I'm gonna do some backtrack before it actually is all perfect. Okay, so I just tried on my dress. My zipper is installed now. However, I need to tighten it up here at the top. So I'm actually going to have to rip it out and then bring this together a bit more. But the issue we are having with in the front is this area where there's a lot of gapping and space right here on me because I'm just small up here. <laughs> um, so I think I'm gonna have to go in and rip out a couple inches along the curves of the waistband and actually raise it up so that we get rid of like the looseness here in the fabric and then raise this and also won't be quite as deep of a V. So hopefully that works to adjust it. That's why we always try things on as we're making them because there's always tweaks that we have to make. So I made the needed adjustments to my bodice and to the zipper. I will say this is probably the worst zipper installation I've ever done, but that's okay. We are not going to look at it or think about it. And the last step in this dress was to attach my labels um, to my garments, which say Maddie Lynn, because that's like my homemade design uh, label. So this is super fun because it just makes me feel very accomplished with the things I make. So after the label is attached, the dress is finished and it will be time for the reveal.
might be my new favorite project of 2021. So thank you so much for watching today's video. If you like what you saw, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and make sure to hit that subscribe button so you stay updated on new videos. See you next time.